Good afternoon. We are talking about simple leadership today or leadership simply discussed. Everybody has a working theory in their head of leadership, but most people haven't really brought it to the fore of their consciousness. They're not really sure why they act, what assumptions are driving the behaviors that you're doing. It's okay for leaders to do that, but if you're in the leadership development space, if you're an HR professional, if you're a coach, you need to have very clearly in your head, what are the fundamentals of leadership so that you can coach, so that you can correct, so that you can advise appropriately. So today, we're going to walk through what I believe are the essential pieces of leadership. It comes down to four elements, two attitudes, two attributes, and two skills. Very discrete piece. All of these go together to form my sense of what's involved in leadership. Let's get started. So let me get these up here and then we'll talk about them. Okay, so these are the four elements that are involved. Um, in any leadership situation, the leader must begin, in order to be effective, must begin with a sense of clarity. Where are we going organizationally? What needs to occur? What are my goals for me and my department or, or my group that I'm responsible for? I can't then help others move in that direction unless I'm clear myself. I should also understand the why we're going there, uh, what our purpose is, what we're trying to accomplish big picture, because I'll want to uh, communicate that uh, as I give direction to people, direction in the form of very clear expectations. The next piece is support. Support is all the time tools, job, resources that people need. It's incentives that reward uh, the work that we want to see. Um, it's making sure that people have training when they need training, uh, that people are in the right fit for the job. So there's a lot involved in that. And the last piece that the leader supplies is accountability. Accountability properly understood is, uh, is simply we, we know what the goals are. It's based on clear direction and, and clear expectations. But with that, we are actually have some way of measuring progress towards those goals uh, and that we're observing and then we're having dialogue about it. So the essential four pieces that, again, the leader brings to this are clarity first internally for himself or herself and then provides direction, support, and accountability to others. Now, uh, the next piece are the two attitudes. Let me go ahead and jot these down, and uh, then we'll talk about the two attitudes that the leader must have in order to be effective. So now the two attitudes, the two essential attitudes that form my simple understanding of leadership are first that the people uh, who I am directing, who I am leading, they want to do good work. I start off assuming positive intent, uh, that they started off the day that they want to succeed. And then from that, I, I then look at my own particular role. The second attitude is how I view what I do. My fundamental purpose as a leader is to find out what they need in order to get the job done and supply it to them. And if I'm supplying what people need to uh, uh, people who want to do good work, who already have clear direction, they're receiving support and they know they're measured, we're going to get the job done. So now, uh, the next two things are, are the two leadership attributes. Let me go ahead and jot those down and then we'll chat about those. For the two attributes that I see uh, that determine effective leaders or that, that uh, distinguish between those who are truly the best, 
uh, and everybody else. Or these two, and, and uh, the, the student of leadership will note that I'm borrowing a page from Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great. He talked about level five leadership, and he said these were the two elements from his research that distinguish the, the leaders of the organizations that made that leap from being good over time to really being uh, truly world class. Simply firm resolve. We will not be denied. We will hit the goals. We will be successful. Uh, that's not easy. That just means I'm sticking into it and I will not quit. Uh, the other part of that though, and this was the rarer part uh, in the leaders that Jim Collins studied, was humility. A sense that it really is not about me as an individual. It's, again, about the group that I am here to serve. That I bring both uh, talents. You know, it, it is based on a fundamental sense, I think, of self-worth. So it's not, it's not self-abasement. That's not what humility is. But it's an accurate understanding of oneself that acknowledges strengths, opportunities, and that we're all in this together. All right, so uh, there's only two leadership skills. Let me jot these down, and then we'll conclude our discussion on simple leadership. So I believe that, uh, and I am acknowledging and just taking for granted that the leader has whatever technical abilities uh, that he or she needs to be leading this particular group of people. I'm not talking about technical knowledge or expertise. I'm talking about what's the pure leadership skills that are needed over and above being a good contributor uh, to the work or a specialist or an expert. Uh, the first skill is communication. We must find ways to communicate and direction to people, to give them the clarity that we have internally, to share that with them so that they catch the vision of where we're going and why we're going there. Uh, that we, that's how we provide support and accountability. Uh, that's how we communicate their worth and we show our humility. In fact, everything here as I work with people, the fundamental piece of leadership is I've got to somehow to be able to say it to them in ways that they get the message, they're not turned off by how I say it, uh, and they're invited into uh, the work. So it motivates, it doesn't detract from motivation. So communication is, is skill one. Skill number two is facilitation. And by this, I'm assuming, when I say that, I am assuming that this leader is leading more than one person. The, the facilitation skill is probably not needed uh, if we're talking just I lead one person, but if I lead more than one, I want to set them up to talk together and to learn from each other, to pull the wisdom from the group so that I am uh, creating the best possible group dynamic. That if I've got two people working for me, the sum of their efforts is more than one plus one because they're bringing their best to the game and they're sharing it with one another. Well, how do you get people to talk to one another? What's that skill called? Well, that's called facilitation. So uh, that, in short, is my simple definition of leadership. It involves, again, four elements. It involves two attitudes. People want to do good work. I am here to serve them. It involves two attributes, uh, character attributes, that is firm resolve and humility, and two skills, communication and facilitation. So. I'd be very interested in hearing your thoughts on any of these, but also what would you add if it was put to you to state simply, clearly, and quickly, what is leadership, what's it about, and how, what's the difference between good and poor leaders? How would you respond? And do you have that simple enough in your head so that you can work from it and help people grow and develop? I'd love to hear your thoughts and contributions. Uh, please add them in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. And uh, I look forward to talking to you next time.